Um, but yeah, I just, I, as a visual medium, I just, I love it. It's an amazing experience to, to, to get to work with Amanda every day, as I do, as I'm lucky enough to do, as an actor. But to work with her in the director's chair is, is just a whole other amazing experience. Amanda's great at everything that she does, so it's not surprising that she's a great director. Um, usually days are done early and she's on time or less than, you know, she's on budget or less than, you know, she's she's quite amazing. And the Amanda Tapping that you see, the, the public persona of Amanda Tapping is, that's Amanda, she's very, very kind and generous and, uh, and beautiful and lovely and all these amazing things. Uh, and when she's directing, uh, She's a horrible, evil tyrant, so there's that. I'm totally kidding. She's not. She's great. She's a very decisive woman, you know. Um, she, she, she's very comfortable with the, the, the power a director wields and uses it judiciously. No, no, wait. Just wait for the camera. She knows exactly what she wants, um, and she comes incredibly prepared. She really is wonderful to watch because she stands her ground and she's able to work so well with other people. A woman in this business has to be twice as smart and twice as fast and always ahead of the, of the guys and she does that seemingly effortlessly. And action! Amanda's directing style is not like mine. She shadowed me when I was doing a, a series called Jeremiah and, and uh, then she did her first Stargate and uh, and we spent a lot of time talking about what it was going to be. Uh, but even then, even when she was back doing uh, her first show, she sort of, you know, took it and said, this is my show. I'm going to do this my way. So even though you make that suggestion about this, I want to do this this way. And, and quite frankly, uh, I, th I think it's a great thing to do. It's a really good way to go about doing it because um, she had to be comfortable with her style and not feeling like the best thing to do was to mimic something she'd already seen. And it gives her a whole different route that she can go. I'm surprised, actually, a lot of times at the way Amanda directs, because it isn't something I would do. She sees it a different way. She actually, where I, I come at it from the right, she comes at it from the left. It's insane. I'm not even gonna try to sugarcoat and say, yeah, it's the, it's the way it is. It's insane. So to be on set, prepping for a scene, running lines with your other actors, and and then suddenly have, you know, props come up and Jordan comes up with a list of props or things he wants to say, and what if they were this whole story? And you completely have to change hats. Switch gears and go, okay. And then you realize you've made a decision on the fly in the middle of this mayhem that will affect your episode. So you have to be pretty sure of what you want to see. Whew. And then you turn back and you become an actor again. And, it, and then you're on set and in front of the cameras and suddenly your mind is going, should I have used that gun holster? <laughs> Sorry, line? <laughs> you know, ah! But uh, for some reason it worked. I think everybody respects how hard Amanda works. And uh, I mean, everybody works really hard on this show, but y you see it with Amanda and she does it uh, with a smile on her face every day. And I think there's this, this extra feeling of support when Amanda's directing. Everybody everybody wants to really do a good job and make her proud. and and uh, show their appreciation. So I think that that's got a lot to do with it. And she's fantastic and she's great with actors. And um, yeah, I love it. I love when Amanda's directing. For me, last year when I did Veritas, I was in the episode that I directed a lot. Uh, with one night, I wasn't in it as much. And camera? Because I've always been on uh, in front of the camera, I like the transition to being able to visually represent the entire story as opposed to just being a part of it. I like the idea of, of mapping out shots. I like the technical aspect of it. Um, and I love the shot making aspect of it. I love, it turns out, working with actors, who knew? Amanda has a great sensibility to actors. Uh, as an actor, it's, it's different when you're directed by an actor, you know, there, there's definitely um, a, a slightly, I think the focus is a little different for us, you know. Um, you're aware of your performance. And because she is an actor, she's able to really tune into you as an actor and to kind of give you these tiny little adjustments. Um, and she, her vocabulary is more in tune to what an actor wants to hear. On Sanctuary, the episodes that I've had have been very Will-centric. Mm -hmm. And I love that. I love working with Robin on that level. And he's, he's a really gracious actor to work with as, from a director standpoint. Robin and I as actors together are complete idiots. And, 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 and 
happy idiots. I mean, it's moronic what we get away with, but we absolutely are goof and goof together as actors. And as a director actor, his personality changes and my personality changes and it becomes this very respectful, collaborative, it's very strange. She still maintains her, her you know, the, the giggler, the, the, you know, Amanda, the giggler tapping persona. But I, I think there, there's something more that comes along with it. I mean, she's, she's in the directing chair. She, she's, uh, there's that much more responsibility. She's sort of, she, you can see her really working through and, and, and really, really wanting to, really wanting to do a good job. And of course she does. Uh, but yes, definitely, there's, there's still that lightness. She'll laugh and joke around, but then that's it. When it's work time, it's work time, and she has her vision. When you work so closely with, with a bunch of people, there's this kind of, it's nonverbal kind of communication. We have, you know, you, you, every, and it's like pretty much the whole crew is like that here on Sanctuary, where it's just like, you know, Amanda, Amanda will call cut, she'll be walking over to me, and she won't even, we won't even say one word, and I'll just be like, yeah, I know, yeah, no, I get it. And she's like, because, and I'm, yeah, no, we're all kind of on the same page, and, and um, it's really fun to, to, to work with her in that situation. And then as soon as we become actors together again, all bets are off. The clown noses come out. It's just weird. It's very, but it, it's this instant shift in the relationship that feels completely comfortable and natural, and these very heady and intense discussions about how we're going to do stuff, and how was that boss, and da, 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 da. You know, and then the next episode, we're, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's so crazy. I don't know. But that's just how it's naturally evolved, and it seems to work for us, so. The man is doing it as an actor, becoming a director. And so her whole take on story is different than mine. And um, sometimes she gets she gets to a point where, where she'll say, you know, I'm, I'm not thinking about this visually enough. And I'm going, don't. You're, you're telling the story really, really well. You don't have to do tricks. And so she tells it in a very straightforward way, but she has all this, she has this cool way of shooting. I like it as a visual medium. I really do. I, I didn't think I appreciated it as much until I started directing. I like the movement of the camera. She is very savvy technically. You know, she has a great eye and she's got great vision and she does some amazing, amazing, she has fantastic ideas for shots and visuals. Well, you know, I always, believed Amanda is a was a real actor's director and you know, the performances that she gets out of actors in her episodes are always so you know just superlative but she really moved the camera in a cool way she used that techno crane to kind of give us some cool cool shots and shot so much of it from above she's become more of a visual stylist as a director uh, as she as she goes and and that's cool to see i mean i can only hope for the same i mean the biggest challenge was actually shooting in the same space for four days and trying to make it interesting the story was really a, a, a fairly easy story to tell but the um because it's a very linear story but the the hard part came with trying to keep that space that that big warehouse space alive and keep it interesting that visual style was born of necessity because you're in that warehouse for 89 percent of that episode and you got to find some cool ways to shoot it it can't just be you know on dollies and sticks and steady cam you've got to kind of get into different angles and you know shooting a, a two three four hander in one location in one in real time with very few cutaways is a challenge and um, she found great solutions so I, I love the way she directs personally it seems that my style is to uh, keep the cameras moving to shoot from sort of off angles, weird angles, shoot up or shoot low. I wanted to try to do that with our heroes, shoot them a little bit more from above and our villains a little more down from below. So just take you just finding little ways to, you know, shooting into corners you've never shot into or, and I just kept the cameras moving a lot. The opening shot, I love. It's just, there was so much happening. We had like 40 extras and we had this whole Chinatown scene and I came with the techno crane again because it's my favorite thing in the world, um, came along the top of all these cool vendors and money-changing hands and, you know, steaming pots of noodles and then up to them and pull back through all these beautiful lanterns and extras. And I love that kind of stuff. Mayhem. Where are you? There was another very technical shot in the warehouse. So, you know, it starts on Will on... Uh, sort of overlooking the medical bag and comes up on Will and slides over and, you know, where Will takes out the two stunt guys and then goes and runs and gets hit and knocked down. So we're in, like, you know, 
five different angles, two different rooms of the warehouse, all in one big shot. And I think the Technocrane guy actually said he hadn't done a shot that hard in a really long time. So I'm like, well, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, the vis effect shot is cool, but really quite simple. I mean, I started up high, I came swooping down. The thing I liked about the big vis effect shot where we come out of the skylight of the studio and then of, of the warehouse that they're in and come along the rooftops of Old City and find Declan and Kate is that I set it up that our three couples, if you will, in the show, we start on, on uh, Sue and Coda, the two bad guys, slide down and come in between Abby and Will onto them, and then we go up, and then the camera comes through Declan and Kate. So you have this sort of boom, 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 across the city, which I thought was kind of cool. What I found with this one was I was incredibly precious. So when Martin and Damien were going, well, we'll just go in and, you know, tweak your edit. I was like, you what? My what? You know, because it's, I became really super precious with the footage. But I basically hand it to, uh, in both cases, Gord Rempel was my editor, and he's just the most intuitive editor I've ever worked with. And he, he mined the scenes. This one was a little more complicated. There's a lot more montaging and a lot more tiling and sort of, you know, the montage sequence actually is kind of a cool. But that was all, a lot of that was in editing and how we, you know, sort of pulled bits out. The editing process makes a huge difference if you've got a lot of footage and you're not sure what to do with it. The edit can completely pull it together. At the end of the day, you're just telling a story. All the cool shots in the world, and I've said this before, don't matter if you don't tell a good story. And because I had a really good story to tell, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't that hard. The worst thing I could do is muddle the story, which hopefully I didn't. <laughs> She's just one of those annoying people who can do everything. I, 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 I... I hate those people, you know? Those people who are like, hey, look, uh, you know, a ukulele, and, and five minutes later, they're like playing, and it's like, you know, ooh, I'm so impressed, you know? Oh, yeah, wow, you can direct and act and produce. You know? I, think, I think she should pull back. I think she should just pull back a little bit, you know, coast, you know? Just do less, because it makes the rest of us feel bad about ourselves. There's a safety net there that is uh, so apparent. And it's, it's, it's so safe and it's so, therefore, more joyful. I'm surrounded by a group of people who will not let me fail, right? I, it's the best supportive environment I could possibly find myself in. But I, you know what's really funny is I always say, oh, yeah, I'll do more. It was great. I had a wonderful time. And then we get close to me shooting an episode, and I go, I can't, I can't do it. And I try to talk out of it. And Damien and Martin inevitably talk me off the ledge and pull me back in the window and close the window and go, you're directing. You know, like every year. I might like by day two on set, I'm like, why would I not want to do this forever? <laughs> yeah, so next year I'll do the same thing. <laughs>